We understand the implementation of the language, our internal representation, how to eval, how to toString, both in Java and in Racket. Let's look at the inverse of toString. So what toString, toString took in a tree, an expression tree, and returned the string. We want to go ahead and parse. We want to given a string, we're going to go ahead and turn that into a um, an internal representation in our language. And a tree is the right structure for that, the parse tree. So, and we have the structures to do that. Uh, yeah, so just remember that, uh, you know, that's eventually what we want because some program is going to come along and they're going to fire up, uh, you know, their, their IDE, you know, Dr. T or, um, you know, the T plugin module for Eclipse or whatever. And they need to type in raw text and Internally, the program needs to have the parse tree. So, parse um, is going to go ahead and it's going to feel very similar to the other function we've written, but it doesn't quite follow the design recipe for experts because it doesn't take in an expert. It returns an expert, and that's certainly going to influence our code, uh, but it takes in a string. Uh, we're going to look at the, some examples of um, parsing and in particularly recursive descent parsing. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it a look. We can do do this in a racket or in Java. We'll look at both. Um, the first thing is um, it's nice to have a scanner in Java, right? What is a scanner? Scanner is a class that um, takes individual characters, a stream of individual characters, and turns them into nice tokens for them. Says, hey, you want next double? Oh yeah, I'll take the three and the dot and the one and the four and turn it into the bit pattern for 3.14 and give you that bit pattern. Um, that saves us a lot of work from us having to read individual characters and process them. So we like tokenizers. Um, Java has scanner that does a pretty good job. Uh, I'll go ahead and provide for racket. I'll provide a file. There is a provided file, scanner.racket. You don't need to look at the internals. Um, if you're curious about what, how to use a scanner more generally, uh, I have a scanner demo dot racket. You can also look at it. It's linked on the, the same lecture page. Um, we use the, the scanner and we'll go ahead and given a scanner, return the expression tree. So actually made parse goes, it can take a scanner or a string. What's the first thing? If, if you give me a raw string, well, I want to tokenize that. Hey, make a scanner that doesn't read char individual characters from a keyboard. It reads them from a string. You can do this in Java as well, right? Uh, Java lets you make a scanner from a system.in or from a raw string or from a file object or from a URL object. Yeah, so uh, those are all sources of characters. Scanner works equally well with those. Okay, so go ahead and... Uh, what is the purpose of our function? Given a scanner, consume one expression off the front of it and return the corresponding parse tree. So there might, we're not going to read the whole input. We're just going to read one expression off the front. And that's going to be an important bit of contract uh, to make this recursive descent work. So we read precisely one expression off the front. Okay, so I have the function parse. Um, takes in a scanner. Has an exclamation point. I haven't really seen functions in Racket with an exclamation point. That's a convention. It doesn't really mean anything technical, but it's a cue that, hey, this function has a side effect. In particular, we modify that scanner you gave me. I'm going to modify it. I'm going to chew, chew off a bunch of stuff on the front of it. So that's a side effect. That's not a purely functional approach. Um, okay. Uh, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and... I uh, have this one line here. This is uh, how we overload our function. So it takes a scanner or a string. The very first thing I do is, hey, if the thing I was given was a string, not a scanner, uh, whatever a scanner is, that's an abstract data type for the purposes of this problem, but um, some struct. Uh, you give me a scanner. Um, if you give me a string, hey, I'm going to go ahead and create a scanner, construct a scanner from that string, and then immediately loop back uh, make this immediate recursive call. It will only happen once, the very, very first time you call parse. Uh, then on that, but if we reach this branch and make that recursive call, we'll have an actual scanner. And now let's start talking. Hey, I'm given a scanner. I need to create an expression. I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, scanner. Um, so there's two operations on a scanner, peak and pop. 
peak looks at the next token at the beginning of the input stream and just tells you what it is, but doesn't consume it off the input. And then pop, that has an exclamation point here, takes a scanner actually, it's like next. Think of this as, it's not quite has next and next of Java's scanner. Uh, pop is like next, but there isn't quite a has next. You just can, uh, I think there is a version of has, has next, but basically you just peek and say, hey, give me the next thing. Actually, I think the way the code's written, it gives you an end of file object. Um, but so if you peek or pop, you get an end of file object if it's consumed, regardless. Um, great, here's what we're gonna do. Give me a parse stream, my Java stream, one expression on the front of this stream of tokens. If the front of the input stream is a number, go ahead and pop it off. We we have a number. I know what type of expert I have. It's nice and super simple. If I have an open square bracket, or sorry, angle bracket. Oh, that was a parenthesized expression. So in your head, still be having this grammar really present, the fact that we can have a number or a parenthesized expression that begins with that. Uh, we're still doing this. We're going to return. So we're not following the design recipe that we have a con with four branches. My input type is just a scanner and a string. Um, but I'm returning one of four types. And so I'm still going to really have four sections of my code. Uh, one for returning a number, one for returning a parenthesized expression. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's look here. Uh, okay, if you got a number at the top, we'll return that number. If the very first thing, look at the next token on my input, if it's the less than sign, hey, I got a paren expert. So go ahead and here's what I really want to do. Uh, this is the magic here. Go ahead and, uh, well, first of all, we need to consume that off the front of the input. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call pop. Now we don't have a begin statement. Uh, we're an intermediate student language. Your code should be an intermediate student with Lambda. Uh, we don't have any way to do side effect. Everything should return a function, but ugh, I want to call pop just for the side effect of getting rid of that angle bracket that was at the front of it so I can get to the next thing in the input. So here's this is kind of a lame thing. I go ahead and say, hey, go ahead and call pop, and I'm using a let statement. The result of that pop, I'm going to put into my local variable called underscore. Underscore is a variable that sort of suggests it's so unimportant it barely has a name. You can barely, you can barely see it there on the screen. Um, and so it's a variable I'm never going to use. Okay, so pop off that uh, less than on the front of the input. Might be worth a little comment here. Uh, consume the from front of the scanner. Okay, and then what do we do? Okay, we have a, I know that I had open bracket and expression close bracket. I've consumed the open bracket. Ah, I'm sitting here, uh, the input stream has an expression on the front and I want to grab that one expression and create a tree from it. What can do that? Oh, parse, that's exactly our purpose statement for parse. Consume exactly one expression off the front. Okay, so I'm gonna do that recursively. This is a slightly simpler expression, I won't have any brackets around it, right? It's no longer a parenthesis, it's the thing inside the parentheses. Well, I guess you could have nested parentheses, but um, regardless, that will, that will work too. Um, hey, this gives me back a whole, the sub-expression. And what am I going to return? I'm going to skip ahead here. I'm going to return a new paren expert that uses that one expression, the tree, that I already grabbed from my recursive call to parse. Hey, that gives me the tree for that sub-expert. Make a paren expert that has that one expert inside of it. Okay, the one line I have here is that you need to also consume, remember our uh, uh, contract here, our purpose statement, consume one expression off the front of my input stream. So I'd better go ahead and consume that close angle bracket. And that's gonna be really important for these recursive calls, okay? Because you want to end up, and our, our contract is exume, uh, consume exactly one expression off the front. If I leave that close bracket, it doesn't really play any role in the answer, but it certainly plays a role in that I'm supposed to consume one expression off the front. Okay. Uh, what else? What if we see a pound sign? Uh, hashtag. Oh, we have, if we saw that, we had a print expert. If we see a, a hashtag, I know that I have a bin op. And I know that I'm going to see, an exp after that, I'm going to see one expression and then an op and then one more expression, and then another hashtag. So what do I do? I'm going to go and, so this is the one that may make the most sense about this recursive descent. 
Uh, if I see a hashtag, then go ahead and pop off that uh, that open hashtag. Here I gave it a name that wasn't quite underscore. Um, it's a little bit more descriptive, but I'm not going to use it, so maybe I shouldn't give it a name. Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to read off an entire expression recursively. Okay, ah, I'll go ahead and call that lefty. It's the left sub-expression of my overall bin op. So read one whole expression. Might be just a few, might be a number like 34, might be a simple 34 in angle brackets, might be a big, huge expression with other bin ops inside of it, don't care. The contract of parse, the purpose statement, read one expression off the front. Okay, since I've read exactly one expression off the front, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab the operator next. So I'm going to go ahead and pop off the next string. Now, we'll come back to why I'm using pop and not parse here, but an operator is not a whole expert, so I don't, well, that's why. I don't want to call parse, because the thing at the front of the input stream, I don't expect to be a whole expert. I know it has to be boy, boy, or boy, one of my three ops. So pop off that one string, remember it in my very my local variable op, read a whole nother expression, righty. Uh, read that closing hash, just consume it off the front of the input so it's gone, and return a new bin op structure with the le whole left subtree, the one string op, Sorry, the whole left subtree, the one string up, and then the whole right subtree. Look at this. Look at the, I think this bin op example is probably the best one to, to look at and study and figure out why it's working and how it's working. Um, and no, remember, remember back when we did the parenthesis, I, I made this big thing, hey, you better consume that closing angle bracket off your parenthesis expression as part of the whole contract. Well, you're like, yeah, well, that makes sense. But here's why it's so essential to do that. Um, I went ahead and called parse, and if that had read off, if that had been, um, I see a hash sign, and then maybe it had a parenthesis expression as the left-hand operator. Um, if that, go, if I'd consumed everything but left that angle bracket there, and the next thing I did was said was, hey, grab the operator that I now expect on the front of the input stream. Well, if I'd left that angle bracket sitting there, I wouldn't be getting the operator at this point. So it's important that my, that recursive call that I made here consumed one entire expression off the front because I'm expecting the thing after the expression at the front of my input at that, point, at that point. By the way, uh, what else did I do here? There's another little line here. It's a little bit of sanity checking. Uh, I went ahead and after I consumed the left-hand side, I knew that there was going to be the operator there. I went ahead and did a peek of S and said, hey, is this a member of the list of all my operators? So I have a name constant ops. That's just a list of the th strings that are allowed. If it's not a member, throw an exception. Otherwise, I don't really want to do anything. Now we don't, meow cat. Um, we don't really have this one-armed if here uh, in intermediate student, so I'm, we're going to fake it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, return a value. This if, this is going to be something that returns a value and sticks it into my local variable underscore. So I have to return a value, and I'm going to return this dummy value, just keep on going, you know, it's meaningless. Um, so this that this little if statement with a returning a symbol if I don't throw an expression, I wanted a one-armed if, and the full racket language has a construct called when, just like if, except it only has a one branch. The problem is we're using the language level where everything returns a value, um, and we we want it to return a value, and so we need to return a value from this. Okay, I'll return a value, but I'll put it into this variable that I'm ignoring, but I will throw the exception if I see something that's not an operator, so that's going to help me. Okay, if you understand how this works. So, uh, number was easy, uh, less than side was a paren expert. Go ahead and read off the parts of the input, return the corresponding paren tree. Uh, same with the bin op, uh, read things off. Uh, the one thing to note is when to call pop and when to call parse recursively. If the thing you're exp is on the front of the input is a whole expression and you know it and you want it, call parse. If the thing at the front of the input is just a single string, go ahead and call pop and that, or one token. That gives you that one token, the hash sign or whatever. So it might be the hash sign, it might be the operator. But think about when do you want to call pop, when do you want to call parse. Uh, there might be a question on the final exam that gives a simple grammar, so let's write the corresponding recursive descent parser. One thing I grade on is do you use par parse and pop in the right place? Uh, not 
confuse them. Okay, how about a parody expert? Yeah, okay, if you see the word even, it's actually even question mark, and I alluded to this in a previous one. Uh, my tokenizer, the scanner we have, uh, goes ahead and um, puts even and question mark as two separate tokens, so I need to sort of peek Peak only returns the even without the question mark. The question mark will still be there, so I have two pops here. And that's an artifact of my parser not understanding, my low-level parser not understanding this particular language's grammar about what should be a full token. Um, okay, uh, great. And then I, you read the word even, you read off an entire test expression. You, again, read off the next keyword that we throw away, read the whole answer if even sort of expression and return it there. And again, you know, sort of mentioned, this all follows from the grammar and the grammar is entirely what formed this data definition. So it's all percolating down and comes out in running code. Um, okay. So I return one of four types of expressions. I have a con where this first one is really the overloading but then I, I did have one branch for each type of expert, not because I'm really processing that type, but because I'm looking to return one of four types um, and using that thing. If I, and then I have a final else branch saying, whoa, I got something. I looked at the front of the input stream and it wasn't a number or a less than or a hash or the word even. So again, I get to throw my own exception, my own parse error, all those syntax errors you got when you're trying to compile your Java program, well, we're throwing them now. Yeah, look who's laughing. Okay, so study that, ask questions about that. And again, I think the poster child, I think, is the bin op makes sort of the most sense to think about. It has enough going on that's not too simple like some of the other ones and not too complicated. Okay, let's go look at the Java version next and then we'll finish up by looking at some test expressions, uh, the test harnesses. Do, do, do.